We're in for a real treat in the second half of our show. We have an opportunity now to talk to two students and their teacher at Irvington High School who are involved in Physics First. And I'm especially excited to hear about it because having not taken physics in high school myself or in college, um, I want to hear about their experience and how they feel about it. So, Dr. Cartagna, yes. uh, Janice yes. Ford, and Josmar Adames. Yes. You got it right? Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's happening with you. First, start out by telling us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Cartagna. Um, have you always been a physics teacher? <coughs> and how um, long? I've actually started out as a biology teacher okay. uh, for uh, a, a good, a short number of years. And um, I was made aware of the PSI program, oh, I guess about three, four years ago. Um, it seemed like a whole different approach to what I was doing at the time. It seemed mm -hmm. exciting because the way I was teaching prior to this, uh, I didn't feel I was getting the results that I, that I was hoping to achieve. Um, I was made aware of the, the Progressive Science Initiative uh, by my supervisor. It looked exciting, like something I wanted to get involved with. And physics was always something that was a little near and dear to my heart in college, but uh, a challenging, a challenging subject. And I'm always up for challenges, so I thought it would be something that I enjoy getting involved in and see how, I, how it worked for students at, at Irvington High School. And I would imagine if you were feeling a little challenged by it, you can relate to how your students may feel. Absolutely, <laughs> and, and I, I'm challenged every day by it, to be honest with you. It, it's just all different levels of understanding, and, and the longer that I teach it, the, the, the better the understanding. And I can understand the frustration with some of the students, especially when students say, oh, I hate something. It's, you know, it's probably because it hasn't been presented in a way that's palatable. And I think that's what this PSI program is all about. I mean, physics is physics, what, regardless of how it's taught. But it just, it's, it's, it's given to the students, it's presented to the student in a way that they, it draws them in initially and it says, yeah, hey, I, 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 can, I, can, I can master this. You know, it starts, it, it sucks you in nice and gently and says, yeah, this is good, this is good. And then it keeps building on that. and, and the, the rigor just continually ratchets up as the units go on. So uh, it's something that uh, I, I witnessed in my classrooms. I've seen students uh, wrap their heads around it and then actually get um, very um, uh, confident about their abilities once they go through unit by unit. Mm -hmm. So Janice, tell us a little bit about you. What year are you? I'm a sophomore currently. Okay. And I've been with Dr. Cartagena for two years. I started in freshman physics, and I'm currently taking AP physics. Oh, okay. It's a, it's AP physics is more of a serious topic. Freshman physics was easy because I'm good in math, so it just came natural to me. AP physics is more paying attention and studying more and getting to know it better. Because in freshman physics, it was, oh, I have this equation. I could just put these numbers in and it's done. But in AP Physics, is more than one equation to find the answer for one problem. Uh -huh. So it's all about knowing the topics and the subjects and all of that, and all the numbers and all the constants, because it's, it's always more than one way to derive that, um, to get to an answer. So I have to know each equation, and I need to know all the variables and all the, the um, numbers to get to the problem. So AP Physics, I like, like Dr. Katanga said, I, I do like to challenge myself, so it was a good topic for me. And since I was younger, I, always, I was always into engineering, so I did enjoy doing AP Physics. Well, I want to hear more about how you have always been into engineering in just a moment. But first, uh, Joe Smart, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm a senior at Irvington High School. This is my fourth year at Irvington High School. Unlike Janice, I wasn't able to go through freshman physics because uh -huh. by the time Irvington High School switched to have freshman physics I was already a sophomore or I believe a junior so the first time I went through the PSI program was through college biology and then now for I'm in currently in AP physics so mm, with Dr. Cartagena now. Okay so you're both in AP physics mm -hmm. did you take the test recently? Yes. Yes. How was it? It was challenging but at the, at the same time it was it was kind of fun because I knew some of the topics on it, like, oh, I know this, I remember that. And then some things I was like, oh, oh this, I'm not really. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Janice? It was fun to basically learn, well, basically 
do what we were taught because Dr. Cartagena was like, oh, you guys have to get this. this you're getting a test, and some of the tests are not going to be the exact same questions that we go over. And it was basically fun to like, pick apart my brain and remember from when we learned to September to now and do the problems. It was good, and then like with the um, free response part, it was challenging, but then it was all about you can't, you can't psych yourself out, you have it, you just got to remember, take your time. Basically just all of what Dr. Cartagena taught us. You can't give up in the first try, you have to keep going and keep trying harder because you got it. It was, it was fun. Wow. I don't think I've heard students talk about AP exams as being fun, fun. so uh, you must be doing something right. Can you tell us more about what happens in your classroom? In the classroom on, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, uh, with the AP Physics, it's uh, the material is 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 very advanced. Uh, it, it's it's a, a challenge for me every single day presenting the material, and I have students in front of me that just don't take it at face value. They ask deeper and deeper questions, and it's for understanding, which which, which is a, which is a wonderful thing. Um, all the materials are available to us uh -huh. online, um, which is a wonderful thing. So I don't have to go home nights and try putting together some sort of uh, organization to this. It's all done for us. Um, it's Talk all about that a little bit. You, are you talking about lesson plans or well, the, quizzes or what are you talking about there? The, well, the lesson uh, lesson plans are there in, in, a, in a unit format. Um, uh, as far as the, the materials themselves, uh, when you go onto the website, it has it has it broken down into oh I, I guess uh, about 17 units of study I believe for AP Physics, uh, and each area uh, it has uh, presentation materials in a notebook type form, and we use a smart board, um, and, and and you present the material, um, and there's embedded questions in the material, and you know, the students will have responders, and. Um, We'll, we'll throw the question up there. It will give them a little bit of background information, and then then the question brings it to another level. It's not just spitting back what I just gave mm -hmm. you. It's mm -hmm. taking it to another level, and you have to build on that. And and then after they hit the responders and put in their choices, the list comes up on the screen on on, on Smartboard. Who hasn't answered yet? And we're waiting. And they'll all respond to their questions. Then once that's done. We stop the question, we get a little pie graph, so many people answered this way, so many mm. people answered that way. We still don't know what the right answer is, so we have a little more discussion in class about what mm. might be the right answer, why mm. why you said it was this, why she said it was that, sometimes a discussion between them, sometimes a little bit of a heated discussion between them, a until we come to a, you know, a resolution, what is the best answer for that. And then, you know, sometimes there's a reveal where we'll, um, there's always, uh, many of the presentations, there's a little reveal slot that we'll pull to the side, and I'll have the answer there. And some explain that to me. I don't know what that is. Um, w w the slides that come up on the screen, there's uh -huh. a little pull tab off to the side, and if you just grab it with your finger and slide it across, it will reveal oh, okay. the answer. Okay. And sometimes students, when there's a little bit of a heated discussion, they'll say, "Well, just pull the tab." <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's the easy way to do it. You yeah. know, just pulling the tab and giving you the answer, and it's over. But there's something about leaving that tab, just sit back a little bit, right. you know, until we kind of use our noodle a little bit more to see if we can actually come up with a rational explanation of why the answer might be the way it is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're wrong. You know, sometimes we pull the tab, <laughs> well, let's discuss that now. Why is the answer such and such when we all thought it might be this? How did they derive at this answer when we came up to this? So it's, it's just, it's food for discussion is what it is. Um, I think it, uh, the materials seem to work. It engages the students. Uh, I don't have students uh, sleeping in class the way they used to be with PowerPoint, copy this, PowerPoint, copy that, PowerPoint, copy this. It's more interaction. The mm -hmm. students don't have to sit there and take notes as I'm talking. Uh, it's, they get copies They're held of, accountable. Yeah, and, and everything that's on that screen, that smart board, is given to them before we start each unit. Mm -hmm. So they could just sit there and uh, yeah, annotate the notes if they'd like. Mm -hmm. um, if they have any type of electronic equipment like tablets and all, you could even download them in PDF format, format and annotate them right then and there. They can go home. Their parents can see what they're, what they're studying. They can use their smartphones. It can be pulled up anywhere there's internet access. So it's, it's all available to them 24-7, whenever wow. they like, and it's continually being updated. So tell me, what is that like for you? I, I had the the opportunity to visit a couple of classes, mm -hmm. and now I'm understanding even more of what I saw that day. But 
tell me what is it like to be in a classroom like that and how does it compare to your other classes? Well, being in a classroom like that makes it kind of fun because usually we compete against each other with the responders. Ah, competition, see. yeah. <laughs> we <We're> usually <laughs> compete against each other to see who gets the question right. Uh -huh. At the same time, we get it the fastest. Yeah. And it's usually a competition between other students. And we usually, even though we're competing against each other, we usually cooperate with each other to see, oh, how they got their answer, where they derived that answer from. And we did, like, we have, like Dr. Cartagena said, heated discussions, and which sometimes will prolong itself for more than it should. And um, <laughs> Actually, I think a lot of the adults would be surprised to hear that students are having heated discussions about physics problems. I think that's <laughs> great. I love that. Go ahead. And um, it kind of differs from the tr traditional classrooms because instead of carrying textbooks all around all the time, we have all the material online where it's convenient for us, which we're always online now. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to access the, the information if we need help reviewing it. We can always just look at it at home. When you say it's online, do you have uh, what what uh, technology are you using to access it? Do you have computers or laptops or iPads or phones or what Us is it? Usually, I use my computer, but sometimes when I'm on the go, I can use my um, I f uh, uh, my Android phone, uh -huh. and I just look at it quickly over there, check some stuff up, my homework. I look at it all okay. on my phone. Okay. Janice? Well, I, be, I really like the way the AP class is set up because a traditional classroom is just rows of desks, this person behind the next person, and there's really no communicating between the students. It's, if you have a problem, you raise your hand and then it's the teacher and that one student, and you're not really addressing because sometimes when a teacher answers it, the student doesn't understand, and sometimes the student is scared to keep repeating because they don't want to feel like they're, they're slow or they're being stupid or they sound stupid. Mm -hmm. So the way the AP class is set up, I really like how we're at the round tables. So if we do not, if we don't know the answer, we don't have to straight shoot our hands up and ask Dr. Cartagena. We can ask another student in the group. Dr. Cartagena actually has the rule, which is C3 before me, which usually in each group is it's, um, usually four students. So that one person can ask each group mate. And if the group mate doesn't have a better way in explaining it, then you could go to the teacher, which I believe is is way better because it not only does it help you with um, your work, it helps you with your communication skills. Because usually people, you see a lot of people in a traditional classroom is always the shy ones in the back of the class. They don't talk. But when you're in this, uh, when you're in this setting, you're um, you're pushed to talk to people because if you don't understand it, you don't want to just sit there like, okay, I'll just wait. Because when Dr. Cartagena does it, it's who has the right answer? Is he's not going to give you the answer. So, if you don't understand it, you have to you have to come up with it, or you have to ask people. And being in that type of setting is really good because usually when you when you're in a traditional classroom, you don't get to know people till like the last couple of the last couple of months of school. Hmm. But when you're in this class, is you have to you have to learn this, the people that you're surrounded with because not only if you're in this group, if your group doesn't understand, you can always go to another group. Which means now I have to become, I have to communicate with you. Which means I, I should know you, and it's it's basically like in his in his classroom is like a big family. So if one person doesn't understand, we we usually don't even go to Dr. Cartagena take no more. We like oh we'll help you, or a group of people just crowd around and be like oh this is how you do it, and then it's a big heated discussion. No, I got it this way, but we got <laughs> the same answer, but I I didn't use this. Mm -hmm. Is is way better than a traditional classroom. And I can't help but think as I'm listening to you that these are skills that will serve you well beyond high school, into mm -hmm. college and certainly into the working world. What, what always um, amazes me is uh, for every problem that we put up, there is a solution, there's an answer to it. Mm -hmm. But there's, several, especially with an, on an AP level, there's several ways of getting to that answer. Mm -hmm. And I may be comfortable with one approach, but if I hold back on that approach, it's amazing what students can come up with. You know, they can take an alternative approach and still arrive at the same solution. And that's where it's at because you say, these are the skills we'll need later on. That's, that's, that's what we do in the corporate world is, right. is all problem solving. And, uh, you know, it may not be physics problems, but you're still going to have to use those, uh, you know, your, your, your cerebrum on to a certain <laughs> level to solve these problems. And I think this just makes uh, students more comfortable working with one another to mm -hmm. come about a solution. Yeah, I mean that really is coming across loud and clear. It might seem obvious to you guys, but um, we don't often hear this kind of conversation with students. And I think uh, it's, it's 
I'm so positive. I can't tell you how excited it makes me feel to hear you talking about your coursework in this way. So I'm curious to know um, your, your peers, you know, other students, mm -hmm. students who I would assume that students in your classes feel much the same way you do. How, how do you think this seems to students outside of physics, you know, kids who haven't taken it? What are you hearing from them or do you share any of these experiences with them? Can you talk about that? Well, students outside of physics, um, I really haven't shared any experiences with them, to be honest. No? So yeah. you're kind of a, a clo more of a, a community of, unto yourselves? No, not really. I explain to some of the students, and it's always, oh, it's only because you're smart that you get in. And I'm like, not really, but if you take the time to sit down and do it, see, that's, that's what I mean by the AP class setting is way better. They're just so used to the teacher giving you a, a lesson and then the notes are on the board, copy notes. And I, I explain to people, because this is usually a lunch table conversation. Mm -hmm. They're like, because you will always see us rushing, because... When we have something like, because Dr. Cartagena most of the time gives us free response to do overnight. So you'll see a bunch of us going around a lunchroom, trying to find another person in the class like, oh, what did you get for A? And it sometimes it sparks interest in the people at the table. So they'd be like, what are you doing? So I tell them, they're like, oh, I don't want to do that. That's only for smart people. I'm like, it's not, it's not just for smart people. You close your mind to it so you will never, you'll never be able to open up to it. They're like, oh, no, I wouldn't understand. I was like... But it's not like the teacher's just preaching to you. The teacher actually takes time. And with Dr. Cartagena, it's not all oh, we're learning, we're learning. When we're in class, he actually learns too. Like he said, is when he does it, it's one way he'll go about it. But if we sit back, if we sit back and talk about it, we'll be like, oh, well, Dr. Cartagena, we went this way. And then he'll stop and he'll think, well, you can use that way. So it's basically teaching on both sides. And I've tried to explain this to students, but it's always, oh, it's because you're smart.